You're tuning in to the Black Hollywood Live Network, featuring news, interviews, and commentary on all things Black Hollywood. Hollywood redefined. From Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is Black Hollywood Live this week, featuring news and commentary on this week in Black Hollywood. Black Hollywood Live, Hollywood redefined. You're listening to Black Hollywood Live. And now, the host for Black Hollywood Live this week, Dario Kristen. Hey, what's up, everybody? You're watching Black Hollywood Live this week. I am your host, Dario Kristen, and here joining me is the beautiful Ashita Andre. Hey, guys. The lovely Courtney Stewart. Hello. And we do not have Jesse Janney today, who is as equally beautiful and lovely, but he will be joining us next week. <laughs> equally beautiful and lovely. Equally beautiful he, and lovely. He had to handle some business. That's right, he had to handle some business. But on today's show, we're handling business because we're going to be talking about Time Magazine announces its 25 most influential teens. That's exciting. Mm-hmm. Yes. The latest on Snoop versus Iggy Azalea Hot is nice. getting ugly. Michelle Obama's Turn Up for What <laughs> campaign is a viral hit. Woo-hoo! I love it. But first, we're going to read the results from last week's Buzzmeter question which was, which is getting a lot of publicity right now, do you agree with Raven Simone's commentary about labels <clears throat> on Oprah's show? You guys voted, 56% of you said yes, and 44% of you said no. Mm. So you guys agree with her, really? I mean, yeah. Well, no labels, huh? Why not? No labels. Uh, well, I mean, okay. Labels. Just making everything generic <clears throat> in general, huh? No, I think that people understand the idea that they... Sp- empathize with the idea that the labels can be limiting and that is what resonated with them about what she said and maybe not just it's not just about the labels it's about when we categorize ourselves how sometimes that limits us in the rest of the world and we don't want that okay i can get with that and apparently 56 percent of the world apparently gets with you on that statement as well ashita you look like you have something to say about I labels don't even. she's like i like labels you like labels well i'm just trying to understand well i don't know let me say this. She has a, a, an issue being labeled, you know, gay or homosexual or whatever, but... And, and African-American. And African-American. So, I'm African-American, but it doesn't bother me. It bothers her. She's fine with being a black American, though. I'm proud to be a black American, African-American. Right. I mean... Yeah, I mean... I mean, when you got to fill out the documentation, do they, they do it for a purpose to... To do what? To know who we are. I mean, they ask for birthdays. They ask for... They categorize. They categorize. They yeah. categorize them. Yeah. So, hey. So you think everybody should just eventually just be an American. If you're born you, in America, you're just American. Yes, and yeah. No, I don't... You know what? Honestly, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's the real answer. I think there is a place... <laughs> It's just like it doesn't affect me. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't affect me. I'm moving on and I do me all day, every day. African American, black, female. I think I mean, it matters it's, it's, at a certain point in terms of collecting data. And I, you know, I, from a. Would she trip if she scientific... was heterosexual? Would it be an issue then? Or is it an issue because you're gay? Well, she doesn't. Well, she doesn't label herself gay, is she there? Excuse me, is she there? She doesn't label herself that. Yeah, because she loves someone of the same sex. Maybe I guess. she loves that multiple why? people of <laughs> different sexes. So maybe it's real. that's maybe that's why. Maybe it's out of respect that you know what I don't really consider myself gay because I don't think I'm gay. I love a woman right now, but maybe tomorrow I'm gonna love a man, and that's why she doesn't want. And the I mean, label. I can oh. I can get with that. I can get with that. I think the, the it wasn't so much for me as far as the sexual part because <laughs> I do think America, just the world, we put things on labels we always have. It's how they categorize everything about us. Right. But. The only problem that I sort of had was the African American versus black, because then I start to feel like when you become a celebrity, and I, I feel like when you are a celebrity, then you start making all these profound statements. Well, I don't want to be labeled this, and I don't want to be labeled that, and I'm not labeled this. And at the end of the day, I'm like, when you walk into a room as an African American woman or a black woman into a a room of non-black people, they're gonna label you as one or the other, but they're going to call you black or African American. They don't care if you call yourself black or African American. Right. So you, you're just one thing to them so but for us to start them. yeah but that's, that's the, them there, I hear you I'm just saying that's my only to classify herself that's fine a... and you know what I'll let her stay I in that bubble I think you should be a caramel American <laughs> 
Be what you on. want. All right, moving on. So today's <laughs> buzzer music, buzzer meter question is: Was Snoop bullying Iggy Azalea on social media? Yes. You guys vote yes or no. We'll read those results next week. Yeah. But we're going to move on to the trending topics with Ashita Amre today. Yes, topics that I actually care about. Oh, <laughs> what? that's good. Is that a little bit of shade there? <laughs> so this one is really exciting because, you know, I love the Obama girls. We, yes. you know, were introduced to them when they were young. And now they are on most influential teens of 2014's Warp List. And I'm so excited. So... Oh, I'm sorry, Time Magazine, excuse me. First daughters, Sasha Obama and Malia Obama, Little League superstar Monet Davis, Jaden Smith are included in Time Magazine's 25 Most Influential Teens 2014 list. I'm really excited about this. I really wish they had a list when I was their age. I wanted to be one of them. I wanted to be one of them, yes. to be one. <laughs> so I'm really excited about this. I think this is amazing, and I think it's inspirational to that generation of young people coming Coming up on what they can look up to. I yeah. think that's great. I agree. I now, it. wait. What let, about me, the... let me let me ask you a quick question about list. <laughs> um, this is just popping my head. Oh. Did you have Jack and Jill when you were younger? Yeah. Yes, so honey. you know, were you, were you a part of that list at all? Like that no. little. Actually, I was oh, okay. not. It, I, I was not a part of Jack. Okay. I didn't know anything about Jack and Jill. When I was okay. growing up. Okay. You were definitely one of them. I was a Jack and Jill list. You was a Jack and Jill list. I, I used to go to some of the. Can we tell what the viewers what Jack and Jill is? Yes, you should share what that is. I mean, gosh, it's been so long. Um, it, it basically was a, a social club. A social club for... for <laughs> go ahead, Courtney. <laughs> go ahead. I'm going to let you say it. I don't know. Like, yeah, I wasn't like, in the club. I would like to define it for Okay, me. so how I it was defined the at it. the time was a, a, what I remember. It, it was like a social club for kind of maybe exceptional black students who were exceptional put blacks. in a, a, a category. I, listen, I was a kid. I don't know. <laughs> there I don't was know. exceptional. No, 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 maybe I, I, I to be put in that category. I, I, mean, if like, <laughs> I mean, I didn't care. I mean, I was a kid. I was like 14. He I was know. like, yeah, I'm you exceptional. Know. Put me in the club. I heard yeah. that. No. All right, listen. so. But this is great for them because these all are exceptional people they are. on this list. I mean, of course we know Sasha and Malia, but let me talk about Monet Davis, who's the first girl to earn a win and pitch a shout out game in Little League World yes. Series That's history. Huge. So huge. The Braided Cutie is also the first Little League baseball player to appear on the cover of Sports. Sports. Illustrated, I love that. honey, throwing that I mean, arm. that's a phenomenal little girl right there, I little woman. That. I Young love that. Woman, I absolutely love that. Now, we all know Jaden Smith, you know, well, you know. Actor, superstar, rapper, all yeah. those wonderful yeah. things. But, I mean, yeah. what were we doing at that age? I was doing exceptional things. You know, I, mean, I, I was part of Jack and Jill. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> Joking. So I congratulate them. I, I'm excited for them, and I wish them the best, and I'm, I just love this list. I think it's amazing. It's so crazy that they're going to be almost, well, the oldest will be college age when he comes out of office in two years, right? Because she's 16 yeah. She's 16. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so, because mm -hmm. they were little girls. Well, I love it, too, just because, you know, we're in a world right now where <clears throat> the younger Ooh, generations who are not African American can look up to these two yes. and and do you think they be are inspired? Really? I, I think that the younger kids now, I don't think that they see the color the same way that we may have when we were younger. I do, mm -hmm. I do believe that. You think they're looking up to Sasha and Malia? I think there are some young kids who are definitely looking up to them. Absolutely. You don't think so? You look I'm a little curious. skeptical I'm just, about I'm it. I'm curious because you know there obviously were other people on the list. The Kendall and Kylie Jenner <coughs> being two of them on the list. <laughs> well, they I, if you, you, know, you didn't ask me the ranking. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just be interested in sort of obviously like time, whatever criteria they picked to select the 25 most influential. Like, it, it, are you moving advertising dollars? Are you like what is it that you know? I mean, they have fashion. The Obama girls have fashion that they wear that you know will sell out immediately if yeah. they wear something mm -hmm. girls order. So people are definitely looking at them. And I just hope and wonder, you know, you know, just wonder. Right. Well. <laughs> just wonder. I, I hope we're really embracing the whole, like, educated demureness that they have because it's very sweet and they're very elegant and wonderful young ladies. So. I agree. Uh, but listen, I'll take this because at least they were included on the list. I mean, the they're list. included on the list. They could have not like been included time, at all. you know, would yeah. make sense that they put them on the list. True. But uh, the wonder for me is did they actually poll young people? Like, did they just, how did they actually decide how did they select the list? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. I don't really feel like I'd be seeing, you know, the Twitters going off about Sasha and Malia or the Instagrams. Like, I just feel like that's not what would be hot in middle school and high school right now. That's probably true. Yeah. Hmm. We'll see how they are. Not to dampen it. It's a right. Right. You just, like, you know. just, you just I made just, it all depressing it. the list now. I was happy about I the list now. I'm depressed about the list. Like, 
probably the most influential on a certain level. But at the same time, their parents have done a really good job about keeping their lives private. Yes. So part of that is a good thing because we don't actually really know much about them other than that they appear to be together and doing what they're supposed to be doing. And for those who watched Scandal last night, you don't want the, uh, the you don't want, that you don't want your daughter on the we videotape. Don't want if you, drunk, know make, if you watched it, you know what I'm talking about. Mm. If you haven't watched it, go watch it and you'll know what I'm talking about as yeah. well. Nice little plug right. in there for right. Shonda Rhimes, right? That's right. Yeah. Go Shonda, come go on the show. Right. <laughs> show you right. <laughs> So I want to talk about Tank here, the dark skin, light skin the issue. The debate is back. <laughs> the debate is back. Here we go again. again. So Tank posed a question on Twitter. Twitter. What do dark skin women have against light skin women? Aren't we all black at the end of the day? Hmm. Twitter erupted. Tank noted the negative reaction on Facebook when he showed his light skinned girlfriend. Now it's And I went on Instagram and them people really went in. Yes, and said some they did. Awful stuff about light skin and dark skinness. Now here's my here's my issue with it. I it's hard for me to report on it or have a say because I didn't it's really ridiculous. I didn't really grow up with those kind of problems when I was coming up. That's because you light skinned it. And see, that's why. I, <laughs> I was gonna say, that, that, you look a little know. shade to the left of brown over there. No, but and then aren't you again, Indian? yes, my, oh, mom, my mom's from Portuguese. More. See, the girls you know, she's was from, like, my mom is Portuguese. She's from Trinidad. Okay. So, but again, mm -hmm. my dark skinned friends didn't have any issues. They didn't. I don't remember having a conversation of them saying, "Oh, he picked her because she's light skinned," or "He's not calling me," or you know, because I'm dark skinned. Mm -hmm. We didn't have those debates <laughs> in high school when I went to high school. So it's hard for me to even understand this. So, well, can, okay. Can you help me? Let on me just, I think <laughs> maybe topic. also you grew, you grew up in LA, right? Yes, I and did. I think that LA is just a different monster within itself. I grew up back in the Midwest, and it was a huge debate. It's still, to, honestly, I still hear it from my I, my mother and my sister. I have mm -hmm. dated fair skinned women in my lifetime, and I have heard it still about when I bring them to the house about them being light skin or oh, you like those red bones or I mean this is 2014 and I still hear it. Oh, yeah. sorry mom and, and sis it's true, you know but it's true yeah. or or you know about their hair texture I, I still hear all that like I, I used to take girlfriends to my aunt's house and say they have been of the fair complexion I would hear oh they got good hair or Oh, you like you don't like a girl with a little kink in her hair. Like I, I, I mean, teased <laughs> my entire life about this. So it's not surprising that this debate is still going on because we got issues among does us. Does that black mean you folks. don't take no chocolates home? That does ever? not mean that. I said when I took the fair skinned women <laughs> I home. Was just with you, I also no, have I taken chocolate women home. And you know what? I, a you, let me tell you too. something. When I took a chocolate sister home, you know what my mom said? What? That's a pretty dark skinned girl. Why can't she just be a pretty girl? Why she could be a pretty dark skinned girl? That's what dark skinned girls hmm. say all the time. Why but am I why is it gotta be a girl? Why is it gotta be put in a separate category? Because we hate ourselves. Didn't you know that? <laughs> <laughs> no, see, like, so I really, really want to know what the... I, 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 I mean, the issue is pretty simple like it, it, it's just slavery term de, de, Back just to slavery the deterioration days. of our self-love that obviously started in slavery but right. we continue and perpetuate like I mean I'm obvious like I grew up around all white people so it, I can't really like I didn't necessarily have personal encounters in terms of school and like peers but my family's southern mm -hmm. so yeah the light-skinned girls the light-skinned daughters in the family like there was an affection that existed that was stronger and, and not I don't want to say that in a horrible way, but they comment when you're the light-skinned daughter versus the dark-skinned daughter, and that that tension exists, and they comment on the good hair versus the bad hair on the light-skinned girl versus. So it, it, what he said is true. If you know she's he brings home, I had a cousin bring home a light-skinned girl. He had a baby with. Oh yeah, she's light-skinned. The baby gonna have good hair. Like those comments continued, yeah. and that was not ancient history. Like that's real life, and. Um, I'm sort of in the middle because I don't get to be classified necessarily as a dark skinned girl, but I also don't necessarily get to get classified as one of the light skinned girls. So I've always sort of been in the middle mm -hmm. and I have a sister that's darker than me and has gotten some negative energy about the fact that she's dark. And so I, I've seen it happen to her, whether it's from family or from outside of the family. So I get it. It exists. I think it's obviously sucky because it's us against us still. Yes, right. it's self-hate. But self -hate. there also still is a level of value of beauty in terms of black beauty that still only 
It's one of those things like why we were so excited that Lupita was somebody and I think I asked the question when um, we were talking about sort of Lupita's like fashion world was embracing her and all of this was happening. Is it something that's just a novelty right now or is it going to finally be a situation where to be a beautiful black woman you don't have to be light skin Halle Berry-ness with some European features. Can you actually be a chocolate woman with a wide nose and somebody can look at you and say not that you're beautiful for a dark skin girl but that you are Just a beautiful, beautiful woman. woman. Because the reality is we had Grace Jones and everybody was like ooh but that was it. <laughs> you know no, we had like, Alec Weck. Alec Weck was but someone she's who... Also, but nobody's running around saying she's the most beautiful woman in the world kind of thing. Like, right. it's not fully embraced. Right, it's a, it's a fashion, a fashion I thing. I give you that. I give you that. So yeah. it's just a matter of when our regular cultural standards, are we ever going to honestly embrace a black woman in terms of her beauty? And her beauty includes the kinky hair, the wider nose, the bigger lips... And not just a brown-skinned woman who is a black woman too, but still represents a certain amount of beauty that's European, like a Halle Berry or somebody else. Well, that's why we've had so many issues and problems we've talked about before, of like Beyonce on the L'Oreal campaign, mm-hmm. where they lighten her, or or, exactly. or, or, or certain actresses and a- actors who are put in magazines and they lighten them, you know, in the magazines. Yeah. It, you know, it's it's a problem that I think it will get a little bit better as we have certain things pushing the envelope like you know Lapita and Mm -hmm. and I think as those type of things start to happen a little bit more it may be a slow journey but we'll get there eventually I think will we fully get there I'm not confident of that get there unless we fully get there right because we black people have to fully get because we don't think it's I think other races would would embrace Embrace it it quicker than we we would would, as our own internal race to be honest with you I have way more um white women or other women telling me when my natural hair is out that that's beautiful than a black girl. I, and you know and that's that, in now and yeah. natural hair is kind of in now so it's kind of a thing. Right. But and I've been at, but I've been natural longer than it's sort of been in. And when I first went natural, yeah. Black folks wouldn't run around like, "Oh my god, it's so beautiful." Mm-hmm. The white folks were. Right. Well, the reason I also think it might change a little bit cuz even if you look at music videos and things like that now versus like the 90s, yeah. you know. Uh 90s we're all about the light skinned girl, long hair, doing that. But now, not saying that's still not in the videos, but I do see a little bit of a transition of like the the brown skinned girl with the the afro, the brown skinned girl more natural, the brown skinned girl with the short cut. I'm saying I'm not saying it's like the majority of the video, but I am seeing it a little bit more now. Where you know it may be a slow pace of us getting there, but maybe we'll eventually get there slowly but surely. You know, I, hmm. will race, I think race is always going to be a factor no matter what until this world blows up. But, you know, maybe we can make it a little bit better. I, I You know, I don't know. But can we ba- stop hating on people on social media, though? Because yeah. they're dating light-skinned people or dark-skinned people. Who cares? It's okay. I, and who cares who he's dating? I mean, you know, and the issue is, too, that when they make it successful in, the entertainment, in, in the entertainment industry that they always go light. They, that they has been a dark. conversation for years. Yeah, yeah, and that's athletes. is it light or white? Because I've heard white. It's light and white. I think white. it's both. I okay. think yeah. The idea that as close to white, the ones that stick with black go to as close as white or mixed that they can, right. and then the ones that go to white go to white, obviously. And there's a level of sort of, and even though it's people are like, it's annoying to hear, especially I don't like to hear black women be like, huh, he ain't a white girl. It's like he can do that. It's fine. But I understand there's a certain element of. Well, what does it matter? We made you, and somehow we aren't good enough. Because there's definitely men that have said, I will not date a black woman. I, I know some of my friends who have told me that and they, they have a they variety of reasons, and you women. have every right to do whatever you want. But it's a, it's a thing to sort of wonder. Like, your mom is your mom, but somehow you don't see that love in your sister's. But I'm not justifying this, but I but if it's in your environment and people have, I'll say, brainwashed you into believing a certain way, I'm not saying it's right, but if you grew up, like I said, I grew up, you know, where it was sort of was like a, a lighter skin. When I brought someone lighter skin around, she got a different reaction. You know, it was, she was, oh, you got pretty hair, or you got, you may have light eyes, or you're lighter skin. It was a different the reaction. The positive reinforcement. You know what I mean? So light. it's yeah. like, that's what I grew up to seeing that. Now, I am a person now who that's not, I, I don't care about that. Mm-hmm. But if that's in your environment, 
that and that's what you grew up to you you know that's what you know i'm not justifying it for most men but that is what you know i think it matters what we say and how we talk about it like when like you said like when your family is telling you positively ooh she's light skinned she's pretty or yeah. ooh there's a, like that stuff we pass along that it doesn't seem like it's a big deal in the moment but that, but in the same way that you hear that lots of dark skinned girls hear it too yeah. So it, whether or not we're saying directly, oh, you ain't cute because you're dark, but you're not getting the positive reinforcement that the light skinned girl is getting. Absolutely. That means something yeah. and it exists and you grow up hearing, hearing that, that and that's the value that you place. And then you see none of yourself on TV or anywhere else or in beauty magazines. So you're not beautiful. Right. Well, it's not going to matter pretty soon anyway because all the babies are going to look the same because the dark-skinned girls now up. messing with the white guys <laughs> and the brown-skinned dudes messing with and the white girls and everybody's anyway, baby is going to look the same. Hey, so it don't even matter. You know what? Have fun, live life, move on. Mm -hmm. Right. Who cares? All right, so my next topic, which is my last topic, I know we got to move forward, is following the success of Steve Harvey's whole advice, dating advice books, he has decided to start a... <laughs> he makes me his face. Just makes he just, laugh. I don't know, it <laughs> always makes me laugh, movie. too. He has a new dating <laughs> website called Delightful.com, which is, you know, aimed at relation-minded indiv individuals, but there's four categories. There's a man, man-seeking woman, woman-seeking men, men-seeking men, and woman seeking women. Get it. Yes. Doing so, it across the board. The site is not only the United States, but also all over the world. The fees are $17.99 per month for six months or $29.99 if a person opts to pay month to month. So... Steve making that paper. He is. I mean, it Steve. makes sense. It's, you know, he's branding himself as the relationship guru. I wouldn't say expert because he constantly say, I'm not a relationship expert. I'm just a man who knows about men and the way men think. And I will give Steve that. And I will give him that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, but he, but, you know, watching his show, he has become a little bit of an expert in relationships, you know, talking to both male and female about different topics, different issues. And he gives really good advice. I, at least I think he does. I don't really watch the show, so I don't know. But, I mean, the general... I've liked love Steve Harvey forever. Like, in his radio show, he used to match people up on the radio show and talk to people, and that sort of spiraled yeah. into all this other stuff. So I've always thought he was great, and the, and it's a great idea. It's right in alignment right with what he's doing. I, I yeah. think it's great, and he so. signed it. He partnered with I, IAC, which also does Match.com, OkCupid, and Tinder. I mean, right. hey, but Like so. I said, he's making that money. He went yeah. all the way, honey. A thousand people have already signed up for it. Wow. Well, there you go. Delightful.com. Yeah, all right. All right. All right. Check it out. Check it out. All right. Well, thank you, Ashita, You're for welcome. those trending topics. We're going to move on to Gossip and Rumors with Courtney Stewart. All mm -hmm. right. So, Gossip and Rumors this week. So... <laughs> <laughs> Apollo's still in jail, and Phaedra apparently decided to just go on a media circuit talking about it. And she showed up on the Ellen DeGeneres show this oh, week, well, which I was shocked. You? Like, I yeah. was really I was, shocked. I was shocked about that okay, booking. I'm not I was crazy. too. Yeah. And then I it was, was a random booking. By the way, she spoke. Well, we will talk about okay, that. I'm so sorry, I'm jumping. I will, okay, I will first say that, <laughs> dang it, woman, your face was beat to the gods. She looked great. I don't know if the dress really fit that well, but her makeup was flawless. But she, you know, talked about, I mean, basically Ellen asked her all the, you know, pertinent questions. And she was very Phaedra-like, for those of y'all that know her from the Housewives. It was somewhat evasive, but somewhat self-promoting and just... Annoying. It was a little annoying. I mean, because why be evasive if you purposely came on <laughs> Ellen to talk about all of the issues that's been going on? That was the that whole did, point of her annoying. coming. Just... And that's not Ellen's brand. Right. Because Ellen had to, I'm so sorry. No, I just, I'm I, so no, sorry. I'm just I mean, passionate I, about this. I'm not passionate I about this. I see you, you like. Well, let's give the comments, some of that. the comments of what she said, and okay. then you can continue. Okay. So basically, <laughs> Ellen asked her a few questions, all of them like, did you know what was going on? Of course not. And when I found out, <laughs> I did my best to get him the best investigators, the best lawyers, because I'm a lawyer, too, and I know he needed the best, you know, representation, and I wanted us to get through it together. Bitch, we know you're lying. Um, <laughs> there's just no way. But anyway, she went on to say not only did she know nothing about it, it was a surprise to her. When she found out, he was calling her from jail, mm. and that's when she knew. Something was going down. Okay, she basically said the whole rumor meal that's going around that she's cheated on him with this man named Chocolate. 
and he's from Africa, that'll be in the show, is all eyes, drummed up by somebody who's needy. We think she's probably referring to Kenya Moore. They always go to the Africans on that show. I know, it's just weird. African-American. Um, she basically... No Africans. No Africans. <laughs> <laughs> Ellen did kind of press her to try to, like, you know, how did you not know? She said, I have five college degrees. I had two babies. I just stopped breastfeeding, like, last month. Basically, I was too busy to know what my husband was doing at all. So that's how she says she did not know what was going on. So she's never been cheating on him. She had no idea what he was doing. She has five degrees and lots of jobs, and she can't imagine how he could have been doing this, but she had no idea, and she did her best to get him off, but she failed. And I believe none of that. Well, Ashita, uh, go I, ahead. Y'all know you, you, you're over there ready to pop out of your seat. Go ahead, Lesma. Like, Tell us what you think. Well, whether that's true or not, it's just she chose Ellen on purpose mm. because she said, you know, I, Ellen, you handle people so well that have something that they need to say. So you say nothing. Right, but that's not Ellen's brand. Ellen is more upbeat, more fun, not very gossipy per se, but she went on Ellen. Ellen agreed. And when she asked her a certain question, Phaedra gave her a look. Do you remember that? She was like, the whole thing was her looks. But and she's just sitting there. Yes, and she, and then she goes, you know, I don't know what's going on, but yes, I am divorcing my husband. I mean, here's the and thing. that's the whole thing. Yeah. So it, it, my thing is, if you want. To make a statement, just make the statement. You already did. We you, already knew you, she was yeah, getting a divorce. It, 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 it just, been it, announced. That whole extra out, the whole sitting there, you know, you know, I'm from the South, and you know, I'm a little Southern belle. It's just, it's annoying, it's frustrating, and it's unnecessary. She could have just not said anything, and TMZ would have reported that Phaedra Parks They had already filed reported paper. that she filed the papers. Okay, so... <laughs> so it's just like, why was this happening yeah, exactly, at all? exactly, exactly. She didn't and give any kind of And you know who else exclusive. looked annoyed? Ellen. Yeah, she was... Ellen it was, was really awkward. annoyed. Yeah, it was it's so awkward. Weird. Because it wasn't fun. No. It wasn't exciting, which is the Ellen... And it was weird, because the whole time, there's like creepy... Like, not creepy, but it was weird that they're trying to have what's supposed to be this like serious, intense conversation about this daddy going to jail, but then there's pictures of her beautiful children like, Hi, Daddy. Then there's like a picture of just the two boys, like big, huge picture in the background on the set while they're talking, and it was just weird. It didn't make any sense. Yeah, but this is the whole thing. It's promotion. What is it, the Housewives premieres yeah, in a couple but weeks? They, they do. I think it, it premieres yeah. on over 9th, but I just for it's, Ellen to have done it, I just I, it think it's wrong. strange. It was wrong. I find it. And very... Phaedra's so calculated to me. I mean, obviously she is a lawyer, so she is the master of knowing exactly what to say, how no. to say it. How to be and how she uh, talks. Yes, how she talks is annoying as well. How to be I'm evasive, sorry. you know. It that's was just slow. Lawyer. It was yeah. like it was only like a three-minute clip okay. that they put online, and it yeah. was exhausting to watch. I'm exhausted minutes. this conversation with her. Let's move on. So we're okay. moving on. <laughs> so it, obviously at the it. top of the show, we asked you guys if you thought Snoopy, Snoopy. <laughs> <laughs> You thought Snoop Dogg was bullying Iggy Azalea on social media. You got to chime in. But the story is, is that, oh, my God, this week, it's a mess. So, basically, Snoop Dogg thought he was being funny. He posts a little picture on Instagram of what is maybe a dude, possibly a woman, but it's an albino person yeah. with cornrows, and he it's a meme that says Iggy Azalea without makeup. Yeah. It's been around forever. Snoop did not make up this meme. Like, people have been circulating it for quite some time, but Iggy did not appreciate it. And she responded fairly quickly. And on her Twitter slash Instagrammery, she said, Why would you post such a mean pic on Insta when you send your bodyguards to ask me for pictures every time we are at shows? <sighs> then Snoop had to respond. It was like two days, I believe, in between. He didn't do anything. And like one of his boys said something to the media that was nonsense. And I was like, okay, Snoop, don't respond. Like, obviously, it was a joke to start out with, at least in my opinion, whatever. But then Snoop responds. And he like posts a video where he looked like he was kind of like smoking it up and basically getting her boyfriend involved and threatening her to basically like back up, you need to chill kind of situation. And she didn't appreciate that either. But eventually it has all been reconciled because about late last night, I believe, mm -hmm. Snoop posted another video 
apologizing and saying it was, you know, under the influence of her mentor, T.I., that he needed to apologize. And he basically said, no more bad talk. I apologize. I'm sorry. I won't do it again. And then Iggy responded on Twitter by saying, I appreciate the apology at Snoop Dogg. Let that be that people... Time to focus on the positive things I've got going on. No time to dwell on the negative. So we're all friends again, and all is right with the world. Smiles. I mean, <laughs> I, the original video that Snoop or the, the the meme that Snoop posted, it was messed up. I mean, but it was funny. It was I just, mean, but it's it was been, funny. Yeah, he was reposting he was just, something that's yeah, been around forever. It's funny. I mean, is it really bullying? I yes. don't think. Uh, really? Well, yes. Why? Why is it bullying? Thinks, right? But, yes. Yeah. Why is it bullying? Because that was his intent to hurt her feelings. I think that was wrong. He knows it was wrong. It was intent to hurt her feelings. You think it was an intent to hurt and, her so, feelings, and, or he and, just read, saw it and thought it was funny, funny. and posted it? Yeah, yeah, but he thought it was funny and posted it. But just like, oh, I thought it was funny that I do this. I thought it was funny that I pull your hair. I mean, I, I feel thought, you. you, you see it's what an I'm intent saying? that he wanted it's to an, it somehow hurt her feelings. It was intentional to hurt her feelings. Whether it was funny or not. Yeah, exactly. We're not now. Kids. When Iggy responded back, I think she said, "This is what this is what it looks like when your aunt is on drugs." That was one of her. Oh, respo- he did one of her. She did multiple ones she did after multiple, she made yeah. the comment right. so that then, he shouldn't have done it. She turned around and did the picture of his aunt on drugs. And then he got extra defensive, and that's when he started threatening her. So what, Snoop? You can take but it. But he you didn't can... threaten her. He didn't say, "I'm about to kill you." No, he I'm was about... like, "You better sit down." You, he, wa- you better sit down. And you back just posted up. a picture of him holding his gun yeah. back in that. Vi- I mean, you know what the. I I mean, is. I mean was, you got was, some you got some merit to, to that, Ashita. She was, was trying to he was so trying to dramatic. show his side. He was Who's trying to show his album side. dropping or a new song that's coming out is because this is so fake and stupid. I mean, here's the thing. She had a rough week, regardless. She, they the Entertainment Tonight posted this thing about her being at the what are the the pharmacies or gro- like Walgreens, oh, something like that. Like, and she and her her assistant went off on the, the reporters reporter. that were following her. She oh, had like a breakdown in the parking I hope you lot. Have Ebola. Yeah, I hope you have Ebola. And then uh, then she had the situation where the ex husband is was suing, suing her. her for a divorce, <laughs> <laughs> saying that they're married, so he's saying that they're married, so he's to entitled to half of her millions, so. and, you know, or her money if she has millions. Um, so. <laughs> It's, it's bullying because he was calling her the bitch, calling her a bitch. I mean, it she was, called, it, I, maybe I would have a little more sympathy if she wasn't so not positive on Twitter herself and has been commented multiple, t- caught multiple times saying some foul shit. So I, oh, I about just, other people. Yeah, it's just I just I, I I don't I don't buy this whole like oh my god how could you say that I'm so hurt like no you're not feeling I it. don't buy it I just think it's ridiculous and you engaged it. You could have just been like, that's ignorant. And like Beyonce. On. Beyonce don't respond to nothing. Exactly. <laughs> adult, we're adults. And whereas I get. But I hear you, bullying. but that's hard. If somebody tweets no, something about. It's you, not hard. If, You're a celebrity. You get so much ish on a daily basis. How is it that you're going to decide? Like, were she and Snoop homeboys? Like, were they friends? It's different if it was, like, your best friend in the business that suddenly turned on you and then maybe you feel the need to respond. I get that. Y'all were hanging out cool. You just she respected Snoop and apparently was admired him, but as far as I'm aware, they weren't homies, they weren't hanging out. Okay. Why right. do you care? But look at it like this. Say say who who is somebody that you look up to? Who who's like an actor or actress or you know, you're an actress, so who do you look up to? Viola Davis. So if Viola Davis tweets something about you, I'd right? I'd be like, dang, she is whack and old to be saying some ish like that. But you Twitter. would tweet that, 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 that would be your response? Respond. No. I would not respond. I, would I can't like, say that. Well, Beyonce didn't respond to you know, rest, rest in peace. I Got her name that fast. Um, the singer when she did. Um, Etta James. Yes. Etta, oh, Etta, yeah. Etta, yeah. When Etta she J- brought negative. Yes. Yeah. But and it went away. That's the point. It, you, it, but but, it, it, but Etta, okay. But I'll say this: Etta James is a type. I mean, I, I, rest in peace and no disrespect. But Etta James, Etta James wouldn't be a person that's really relevant enough at that time to for it really to matter. At the end of the day, Beyonce is going to win because Beyonce had way more fame and fame base at that time. So you think but it's a business? But, but I think that. But I think that Snoop. I'm just saying that Snoop saying this about her, you know, Snoop is the king. You know what I mean? So him saying something negative about her is going to filter. That's going to be put out and it, where people are going to pay attention any, it to that. It would be different if he brought up something like a rumor like, hey, I heard I actually wrote her raps for this song. And she was trying to, like, come correct. Like, absolutely not. I wrote that song. Fine. I feel you. I that's mean, factual. This is I'm, like Kitty, like middle school nonsense like why like it's a meme that was already going around with multiple people if you want to say anything just be like i guess we aren't mature <laughs> and he did post a picture 
of Nicki Minaj and said, you better be quiet before I get I'll a real writer. I Nicki Minaj <laughs> after you. Or he said, I'm something like sending Nicki Minaj after her or something. A real, yeah. writer. A real writer after you. Yeah. came after it got engaged because she engaged. It was so not necessary. It was so stupid and silly. Like, you, why bother? Why bother? Because you want the press. Bullshit, you're not a victim. You wanted the press. Okay, that's. I didn't okay. think about that that angle, but you're right. Well, well, you're probably right. Go I'm ahead. Sorry, I just uh, can't, like, and because there's so much actual bullying that people are being harmed by. The idea that that is supposed to be harmful and, like, when you did not even have to deal with it at all is just disgusting to me. Okay, yeah. I mean, there's a difference between a joke and bullying. I obviously. just can't. Yes. I can't. Okay. Okay. Right. Well. <laughs> All right. We're Speaking of on. bullying, I just can't even do it with the story. Terrence Howard. It's, oh God! It, every time we talk about his him, his wife it makes is bullying so him. I think. <laughs> or ex-wife. But was, he gets himself into. I'm sorry. Because he's so stupid. Like, he is. And I was so in love with him, and like his whole he's personal dumb. life is such a disaster all the time. I can't. Like I just and uh anyway. So Terrence Howard back in the news because his other wife. Because y'all, he got all kinds of ex-wives. Um, the newest ex-wife, Michelle Gint, is still claiming that um, Terrence owes her a fortune in back spousal support and legal costs, totaling up to almost $500,000. And she wants to force him to pay. Um, she's basically saying that he was hiding money, and that's why the court was sort of like, oh, I guess he ain't got no money. Um, but the reality is is that basically he told her that he ain't got no money because he paying all this other money to his other ex-wife. So he ain't got no more money. That's what he told the court. She was like, that's crap. And she has proof because back in 2013, he created the fake debt to his other ex-wife. Um, and that's how he was able to fool the court. He made it up. And um, she says that it was his plan to make it look like he had no funds. And he actually told her. I am not going to give you one cent at some point in the course of all their divorcery and mess. And supposedly Terrence actually brought in $1.3 million last year alone. And he has steady work lined up for the next two years. So he will have to pay her handsomely. If people. She, stop wait, okay. Because I was reading. Uh, oh. Man, get a job. Stop asking I, 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 people just, for money. For money, right. Get right. a job. Well, pick, even pick the right women. Move on. Pick the right women. Just Move don't on, get girl. But then sometimes you won't even know that. Just so. don't get married. But here's my question. Because when I was reading this article, I was getting confused on who, which, which um, wife. Was this the first too. wife or the second wife? This is the second wife. The second wife is asking for the money. Girl, he just got on Because he's beating on people. And then they're Wait married. Is this and then the one that he was engaged to for two months? Like just now. I, yeah. Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. Because she the was like a one. minute ago, they were in love on the red carpet, yes. and now right. they're divorced. I was like, when did y'all even get married? Like, I can't. Because he was already going through it with the other one while they were on the red carpet in he, love. Like, right. what is happening? He should not stop he, getting married. Yeah, stop getting married. Stop Terrence. getting married. Stop Terrence. getting married. Stop and yeah. obviously, people thought you were a payday, and now you're yeah. stuck and caught up. It's just dumb. Yeah. It's just dumb. But go him. $1.3 million. I never would have guessed that. And, and but that's for him. Taxes, for the next two years. So I let's mean, just, you know. You know. Just, yeah. Stop getting married, Terrence. Stop getting married, Terrence. Stop getting just married. have a long lost girlfriend forever. Don't have a girlfriend. But don't stay too long because you might get that common law. Switch states like, in between. <laughs> Move out of California for about five no, years of that of house. that relationship. No, I'm not right. her keep her own residence. Right. You keep your own residence, and there will be no issue. Right. Like, <laughs> go with that or call Steve Harvey. Right. <laughs> you need to go on delightful because you need your to go on delightful. Not, your relationship because your relationships are not delightful. Are not delightful. Com. You they are not delightful. Dot com at all. Negative. He ain't fine in that picture. Look at his little pretty face. Terrence we support Howard. you, Terrence at Black Hollywood Live. We hope you get your shit together. together. And if you Stop hitting them. Do that too, because we don't heard you was hitting on them too. So just do yeah. something, brother. Do oh. you too? You too beautiful. Go and too be talented. by yourself and find yourself. Right. Find go, yourself, go to brother. Tibet and go on a mountain with a yeah. <laughs> pray. Find Jesus. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Examine Buddha. <laughs> Learn the principles of enlightenment, because you are failing. <laughs> now that we have given you ample oh advice, Terrence. God. It's only because we love you. <laughs> it's only because we love you. And we want to see you on TV and no movies. Yes, and if you want to hear about more of the advice we give on relationships, you should tune into other Black Hollywood Live shows and repeat shows that we've put on iTunes, where you can go and rate and, and I said rate you can't and tweet, because I can't even talk now, Tara. You can rate and tweet and everything else. Now, you can go and rate and give us a comment about our Black Hollywood Live shows. We have a variety of different shows. Phenomenal Woman, which Ashita hosts. Fashion 401, which uh, Courtney is on, which we just, have Beverly, we, we just have Beverly Johnson on this Check week. Check it out, Supermodel. guys. Beverly Check Johnson. Yes. We have portraits, GNT. Uh, uh, what else do we have? They go on and on and on, on. Just you should go check it, check out, it out. Give guys. us a rating. Let us know what you think, so we can continue to give you great programming. It'll be fun. All right, on to hot topics. We are now mm -hmm. going to go to our EUR Web Story Spotlight of the Week. Ooh, what? 
Well, the Obamas have been very busy. We talked about know. the Obama daughters earlier today, but now we're going to talk about their mama, Michelle Obama. Mama, mama. Mama, mama. Mama, Obama. Mama, Obama, who is uh, making a lot of hay hayway in the viral hayway. world because of a turn, turn up for what? Turnip. Turnip. Turnip for what, for what campaign, uh, which has gone viral. Uh, the video is in response to the hashtag ask the first lady post from Obama impersonator Alpha Cat when he asked her how many calories do you burn every time you turn up and this is Michelle's response on her viral Love video it. <clears throat> turn up for what it's a very quick six, like six seconds of it's the like turn up for what super quick it's like super super quick but um, so that was her response turn up that, for what? oh we're gonna remix that <laughs> I love that video. It makes me smile every time I see it. Uh, this gave Michelle a chance to also promote her Let's Move program, which is promoting exercise and healthy living and eating. Um, the Obviously, the music in the background was Little John's Turn Down for What, which is also the voting anthem to turn um, for the uh, midterm elections for Democrats. Um, now, apparently, this, t this uh, viral video got 10 million loops in less than 24 hours. That's crazy. I love it. I think, you know, Michelle, She's, she can do no she's, wrong. She can do no get wrong. There. We're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. Yeah. We're gonna get there. But I love this video. You should, you should keep like supporting and tweeting it out so she keeps getting the hits. Yeah. So um, I, I love think. the stills. <laughs> the stills are great because it kind of goes right into the motion of what she is doing. You know, that last one is like I'm in it. I'm in it to win it. I'm in it to win it. <laughs> Um, all right, so moving on to our next story. But for more of that, actually, you can tune into EUR Web, um, go to their site, and find out more information about what she's doing with this campaign. Um, another campaign that's making hayways this week is celebs are snapping themselves in bed for a campaign for to help Syrian children. Oh. The campaign's entitled Hashtag Wake Up Call, which was launched by UNICEF UK Ambassador Jemima Khan. And uh, it's basically spreading across social media, and it's in efforts to design the awareness of dangers towards Syrian children which have been impacted by the war. Now, some of the celebs signed on to include are Naomi Campbell, uh, Liam Neeson, Paris Hilton, Stephen Fry. Um, this is uh, one of the most, uh, Syria has been voted one of the most dangerous places in the world for a child to live. So these celebrities are all coming together to help out the, the program. And as we see here, a picture, if you go to Black Hollywood Live, you can see this picture as well, of the celebrities such as Naomi Campbell right here who did her tweet and post. Uh, 6.5 million children have suffered because of the civil conflict. Roughly 2.0 million are no longer able to attend schools. Mm -hmm. And 1 million displaced in nearly... Na it, one million have been displaced into nearby nations due to the war. Holy so babies. it's really sad. Khan, who launched a campaign, said this about why she wanted to put this together. The main reason is to raise lots of money for the Syrian refugee children. So, you know, if you guys want to support this, tweet it out. Or there's also a site that you can go, go to and donate money. So it's a great cause. And we wish her well with that as well. Naomi, I woke up like that. That's right, Naomi, I woke up like that. Now, okay. the last story that we have today is in reference to the holiday that just passed, which was Columbus Day, <laughs> which, if you live in Seattle, was not called Columbus Day. It was called uh, Indigus, Indignus, indigenous. Indig indigenous, indigenous Day uh, instead of Columbus Day. It uh, was the definition of this is it originated or anyone who originated or living naturally in a particular region or environment. Now, the efforts were to honor Native Americans um, versus the original settlers, which such as Christopher Columbus, which have been pretty much the landmark for this holiday. But it got people up in a little bit of an uproar about this. So we have a little quick video clip that we're going to play of uh, some of the news that made uh, its way into Seattle. Hall in Seattle over a resolution to dump Columbus Day. Nobody discovered Seattle, Washington. Native Americans against Italian Americans who are insulted. Italian Americans everywhere are intensely offended. The native protesters say they're not against Italians, just this one, Christopher <laughs> Columbus, who we were taught discovered America, but who led to the murder of millions of native people. It internalizes genocide in our children and it makes them ashamed to be who they are. I personally felt it myself growing up and um, it's just time to change it so that they can be proud of themselves and not honor a man that murdered their family. The debate spilled out onto Seattle streets. It seems to me like they should separate the events. But the council voted <laughs> unanimously. 
Now, when the mayor signs off on it, the second Monday in October in Seattle is designated as Indigenous Peoples Day instead of Columbus Day, which is recognized federally. And as for the Seahawks game against Washington, D.C., demonstrators say that name will soon change as well. Even the Redskins is a very ugly name. They would like it if we called them Mighty Whiteys. Statement of the entire thing, that part right there, that last part. So, yeah, so Seattle has some changes here, and uh, some of the other states also not celebrating Columbus Day is Alaska, Hawaii, uh, uh, the, um, Oregon, and South Dakota. Good for them. Interesting. I'm surprised, like, federally, that after all this time, mm -hmm. like, we really still have Columbus Day as a mm -hmm. federal holiday. I agree. Holiday. Especially like, when I we do just, know, most of us know the real reason the, uh, the truth, which yes. is what they're stating. And it's just like, eh, maybe make it, I mean, we obviously have Fourth of July to sort of celebrate the founding of the nation, so yeah. maybe we should just leave it at that, because, yeah. I mean, that would be like, I don't even know, like, nobody's celebrating, I don't, it's, I don't want to, I hate that comparison with Hitler, but it's kind of like, why would you celebrate somebody that really destroyed a whole race of people? And stole their land, and just the list goes on and on. And be, and you're celebrating mm. saying that he right. discovered, discovered and established. Right. Exactly. Right. And I don't know. It's, it's yeah. wrong. I mean, celebrate him as a historical figure. I don't think we should stop like studying and knowing that he no, existed. No, absolutely. We need to, to know the history. a federal holiday? Yeah. Before. Well, other states may follow what Seattle's doing, and we'll see what's going to happen we'll in the see. future. We'll see. Eventually, maybe they'll change it in the federal government. And it's going to be interesting to see what they do with the Redskins as well. We've talked about that, that on Black Hollywood Live. Been yeah, that debate's been going back and forth. Going on. And I think it's going to change very soon. Very, very soon. I mean, it is. It's, Everybody it's talks messed about up. When do you get that it's just too, we're being too sensitive and politically correct about stuff? But if, if, if Indians are saying that they're offended by it. They're Native American. Native American Indians. Yes, no, no labeling. No labeling. Right. The Native people that were here before any of us. Right. But they're, if they are offended by it, then we need to make the change. Yes, I agree. So. Oh, yeah. Courtney doesn't think so. I don't, I don't have actually an opinion. I, I understand it on both sides of the argument. And sometimes, but only, I only understand the other side of them wanting to keep the Redskins in terms of there's always going to be something, but is that an excuse not to do something? No. So I don't, I mean, if they change it, I think it's great. It would say something about <clears throat> humans and our actual affection and appreciation for each other. Do I actually think that we have that affection and appreciation for each other? Like, we should? No. Which is why I'm sort of like, it's never gonna, it's not going to happen. I think it will. I think it will happen. All right, well, you have uh, tuned into Black Hollywood Live this week. I want to remind everyone to go to the buzz meter question, which we talked about today, yeah. uh, which was, was Snoop bullying Iggy Azalea on social media with this whole Twitter thing back and forth? We want to know what you guys think, and we'll read those results next week. Ashita, thank you for substituting for Jesse today. Where can you your do. fans find you? They you wanna... can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Ashita on Ray. Courtney Stewart. Stewart Starlet. And you can find me at Dario <laughs> Kristen on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Thank you for tuning in to this That's week, William. and we will see you next week. I'm so cold. Cool. Cool. Questions and comments, contact us at info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I'm your BHL announcer, Scipio. Instagram me at Planet Scipio. Thank you for tuning in. The following is a presentation of the views expressed here are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.